Hey, Mr. Slow, we back. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Um, I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, I just turned the volume back up. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Mm -mm. She said she can't hear us. Yeah, but that's because I had the volume down at first. So are we buffering at all? Um, like I said in the last live, I'm like even having problems with my cell phone. Like I don't know what's going on, but I looked online and they said there are some outages in our city, in our area. So I don't know what's that about, but... Anywho, I'm glad we're back. I'm glad we were. Hopefully, everybody will be able to come back because I couldn't post no uh, notification. You know, we just basically shut everything down it's and started back up. So, yeah. But you can see it's perfect. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, she was saying no to uh, the outages around the area. But, yeah, so uh, where did we end off at? You guys remember where we ended off at? I think you were talking about... Um, you were talking about some. Oh yeah, we were talking about the safe haven. You know how people oh, yeah. be giving their kids <laughs> up and stuff. Um, whatever happened to that? Did, because remember, uh, it like blew up, and I think people like figured that maybe that was not a good idea. I think they <laughs> they, they they finally got a control of it because I know here people was driving for miles around because yeah. we was one of the states, and they was like, I know I remember. I, I know if I, if I remember correctly. Oh, you could take them to the hospital or the fire, fire, uh, the yeah. firehouse. Mm -hmm. And, uh, more people were dropping them children off left and right. Like, uh-uh, you got to go. Kids come home from school. They like, what we do? Or oh, nothing, but you got the wrong. Mm-hmm, yep. So, I mean, it was a good thing, but then it was also a bad thing. Because some people just wanted to they, be done with trying to raise children. And they was and, abusing it. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Johnny. No, no, I was just going to say they was um, tired of raising their children and was trying to find a way out. And this was like illegal. You could drop them off. There was no consequences. You didn't go to court. You didn't go to, I mean, it was like no consequence. You just dropped their children off. And it's a, it was a good thing That's because some people needed somewhere else to go because their families couldn't take care of them. And then it was also a bad thing because they got overwhelmed mm -hmm. with, too many children to try to put in foster care. Yeah, and I think it was where they was dropping them, like, not, and not against teenagers and nothing like that, because sometimes it might have, the way things is going nowadays, it might have been for the better that God opened up that door and then, you know, shut it, it shut it like it was. Now, we looking at it like people, not looking at it like that, but what some people might have seen is where opportunity, oh, I'm going to raise some kids, I ain't going to trouble, let's go, whatever. Mm -hmm. But some of them children that was dropped off, it might have been for the better. And yeah. you know what? It might have been a say it might have saved a few lives, but then also it was where like like Tanya said, it was it wasn't enough it wasn't enough people to probably foster or adopt because more people Yeah. And it and it's sad, but it's where more people want a newborn or, or you know, a child probably where they can still kinda where they feel like it, it wouldn't be too hard to train, but anybody can be trained. But, I mean, not trained, but, you know, like raised a certain kind of way. I mean, you know, old, old habits are hard to break, but... Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. Like, some people, um, like, okay, like when I was saying earlier that some people, some of the kids that were giving up was around, they were almost grown, like about to graduate from high school, but they wasn't giving away their little kids. They was giving away the older ones, the 16 and 17 year olds, and was keeping like the toddlers because I guess they felt like, okay, they this child right here, um, he ain't listening, he doing this, he showing out, he on drugs, skipping school, whatever. We going to give that one away. So a lot of that was going on, and that's, how, that's why they ended it because kids were being, people were driving miles, like Sam said, to, to Omaha. Because we were one of the safe haven states and people were driving miles to drop their child off. And they showed them on the news. People was just dropping their kids off and walking away. And I was like, wow. But and a I lot mean, of children was like, what do we do? Why, why, you know, why are we here? Some parents, some kids would go to school in the morning, come home, probably to like their daily routine or whatever, whatever they was getting away with or whatever they had to do. Because it was sounding more of 
that it wasn't just like, not that the kids was bad. Some people was just like, oh, Lord, I've been dealing with parents. And now it's an opportunity. I don't get no trouble, no consequences. Oh, everybody must go. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as far as like, you know, this situation uh, where we're talking about this little girl, right now we don't know where she is. She's missing. That's She's sad. been missing since late last week. Her name is Malia Davis, four-year-old little girl. Um, the stepdad, okay, now, we know that there was some injuries done to this child in the past. The mother, she's claiming that there was never any abuse, but she has some severe head trauma, head injuries, and she had to go through, you know, more than several uh, brain surgeries because of that. Now, Malia has been missing since last week. I know a lot of y'all have heard about this. I've been seeing people talk about it. Um, again, according to her stepfather, Darren Vance, him and his one-year-old son and Malia, his stepdaughter, were abducted on the side of the road Friday night in Houston area by Hispanic males. Just trying to make sure I'm in the camera. By Hispanic males. And they're saying that um, they knocked him unconscious. And they he said they knocked him unconscious at 9 p.m. at night. On a Friday. On a Friday. And he was unconscious till 6 p.m. on Saturday. In and out of consciousness, right? Yeah, he said he was in and out of but consciousness. Still. Well, he said when he finally woke up Saturday evening. But he did say he was in and out of consciousness. And I guess he finally, like, totally woke up, you know, Saturday evening. Does that, I mean. That don't add up to me for the simple fact is, okay, 9 o'clock tonight. Round about somewhere here now. You get knocked out unconscious. You got a four-year-old little girl. Yep. Could have been his daughter, biological stepdaughter, whatever. You got your son. Could have been his stepson, which was his biological son. Okay, my thing where I'm I'm having a hard time believing any of it is, okay, this little girl. It don't add up, Kaloui. Right. This little girl and this baby, three Hispanic males, and that's what make it bad for everybody now. I kind of know how I feel when they was always blaming them on black men. My thing is, okay, they could get probably just as much, if not more, for the one-year-old. Just like I said, this goes back to like some jobs now that a lot of jobs are not making you go to school to get the training. They, 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 if they send if you're a good worker and they look at your work, they're trying to get you in there and get you like a clean slate. Okay, you tell me they wouldn't have, I mean, I'm glad they didn't. Don't get me wrong. But they just took the four-year-old little girl and left yeah. this baby and a man knocked out on the side of the road. Okay, saying that they did do that. Nobody came by. At one point, this baby had to cry something. One and old. one year old, I'm sure it could do something. On the something. side of the road. In Texas, right? Almost 24 hours. This was in, um, hold on, let me, hold on, here it is. <clears throat> it's in, okay, they, they, they live in Houston. They live in Houston, Texas. And at the time of the year, the weather, a certain kind of temperature. It's, it's kind not of warm, warm down there right I mean, now, right? Too, yeah. Texas is never really a freezing cold state. I know they've been in snow. I've heard that, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, not I want anything to happen to the child and nothing like that. And I pray to God that the sister, where she is, she comes back home safe I and alive. Do. I hope she do. But I'm thinking like, okay, you got these two kids. You get out to stop for a tire. Not saying that, that it happened, but you mm -hmm. know, none of it. Not saying nobody didn't approach the man because yeah, I know. Yeah, he said he was changing a tire, Kalui, and it was two children his four-year-old stepdaughter, and his own one-year-old son. And they left the son. This is what he's saying. This is what he's trying to insinuate. They left the son with him. Left a one-year-old child, a one-year-old child who can't fend for themselves with their father who's knocked out. But they take a four-year-old girl. I'm just saying 
to me, what they the logical thing or whatever you would think would be, they would take them both. Yeah, the man ain't right. Or he kill the man di- and yeah. kill the child. I mean, you 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 wouldn't want that to happen, but it's just not making any sense. Like, why you leave? Of course, the little one year old can't say, "Oh, it was them. It was him." They can't pick him out in a lineup. But you leave the man alive that saw you, and you leave his kid. Not that they knew, because now you're saying probably if if it did happen, you would probably roll up on the scene figuring both of them are his or something. Right. And then he was in and out of consciousness. He said he had came in and out of consciousness while they was in the car with him. So that means I'm like He definitely seen something. If you didn't see their face, he saw a shirt. They nowadays they nowadays it forensics is way easier and all that mm-hmm. stuff to Match, they they got so much stuff that, I mean, you could say and they can sketch out and, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm thinking like, if they was going to steal a child, one or both, why would they leave this man that they didn't knock, if they didn't knock him out, they know, I mean, I don't know if they checked to see if he's alive or they thought he was just, they had killed him or what, but more like if they was up to something. They did, I would think they, they would have shot him. Yeah. If they were trying to get away with kidnapping um, or murder, because God forbid the child is dead. God forbid the child. I hope she's alive. I yeah, hope she's like, alive. yeah, that's what I'm but saying. But why would they knock you out? I mean, somebody who's really going to kill, I mean, still a child, they're not trying to leave no witnesses. They're not trying to take no chances. Knocking you out, that just means they punched you really hard or hit you with something. You would think that they would shoot you, and that's just why he could have did it himself. Strangle you, uh, knock you out, and choke you to death, or I don't know. It, the 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 story is it really they don't, don't add up. My thing is about this here. I'm thinking this is what I, this is how I feel about it. Okay, he gives it to someone with his tire. He get out to check it, change it, or whatever. Yeah. You got the four-year-old little girl, regardless of what she is to him, got a one-year-old boy in the car, regardless of what it is. Okay, somebody roll up on you. And they they, they could be up to no good. Mm-hmm. They force you back in the truck, or however he get, they all end up in this truck or whatever, with these children. You tell me that if their intentions were to even just say a word just to take the little girl, they just going to knock this man out. Take this girl, lead this baby, say that's what they, they you know, whatever. Yeah, let's say this did really happen, yeah. But still, okay, when they knocked him out, did you, I just think myself, just they want to so just knock him out. Okay, they knocked him out. It's three of them. Three dudes, and they just knocked him, just doing they just knock him out. out. Don't check. He's out nothing. cold, bro. Let's if they is Mexicans, he's out cold, bro. Let's go take the little girl, bro. Let's leave the little boy, bro. We just take the little girl, bro. Come on now. They don't say both them children. I don't, and now they, they, it they, don't make make it make sense. So I was like, y'all just gonna take the ba- the, the the big girl. Don't take that baby mm. and that girl. Not that you know you don't want that, but I'm just saying. At because the end if it's of the like still if they like what do you call that? Like um um when they, they, they kidnap kids, uh what do they Traffic, call it? Trafficking, trafficking. Why wouldn't they take the one year old? They don't get more money for him. You know what I'm saying? Because the younger the children is, from what we know or seen in movies on the news and stuff, the younger the yeah. child is, the easier it is for them to raise them to do what they want, act how they want. Um, influence them, and so I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, what What do y'all think? Have y'all seen the story? Let me read a little bit more, and then I'm gonna let Sam get back into this. But um, <laughs> uh, let me read y'all a little bit more, okay? Um, Bowen's address also addressed Malia's head injury. The Houston Police Sergeant Mark Holberg has said Malia has had several. No, multiple brain in surgeries, including one in recent months. The surgeries were intended to help an injury heal, an injury that the mother claims did not come from her being abused by daycare, right? Mm. And then keep in mind the kids were taken away by CPS um, last year. 
And then Bowen says she took her daughter to West Houston Medical Center last July because she was lethargic, but nurses didn't examine her head. And then weeks later, on July 28th of last year, Malia fell while she was sitting at the table eating by herself. That's what her mother said. She fell. So last year, she would have been like three, right? So at three years old, last year, her mother claimed she fell while sitting at the table eating by herself. When she falls, she came around the couch and, well, okay, they, that must be a misprint, a typo. It should be when she fell, she came around the couch. She had a deep gash in her head and it freaked me out. Like, what did she fall on? Did she fall on some cement? Okay, she fell out she fell out the chair by eating. They said she was eating at the table by herself. She fell. Um, then she got up, came around the couch where her mom was. She had a deep gash in her head and it freaked her out. Mm -hmm. Said her mom. Mm -hmm. Um, her mom said she rushed her to the doctors again. Um, and doctors dis discharged Malia without performing a CT scan. Five days later, in August, again, this is last year, Malia suffered a seizure, her mother said sobbingly. Malia was taken again to a children's hospital. They did a CT scan, and that's when they told her there was bleeding on the left-hand side of her brain. At that point, it was a life-or-death situation. So the doctors operated on the little girl. A few days later, the officials with CPS arrived at the home because, I mean, it's like, okay, it's, it's not adding up to CPS or to the authorities, uh, evidently. Right. And they said they didn't find anything because, you know, we're not those kind of people. That's what the mother said. But that mm -hmm. month, CPS placed, they had some reason, and placed Malia and her two brothers with relatives. An arrangement that continued until the judge ordered them return home in February. So they were returned back home, all the children, this year in February. Now the police are on the hunt for a trio of suspects that Vince, the stepdad, described to them. Um, reported they're driving a blue pickup truck with the young Malia in the truck. Malia is about three feet tall. She weighs 30 to 40 pounds. She was last seen wearing a light blue Under Armour jacket, blue jeans, gray Under Armour tennis shoes with pink and white details. And she had a pink bow in her hair. Now, here's everything we know about the young girl and how she went missing. So y'all listen to this, okay? Vince told detectives that him, Malia, and his son were on their way to the airport Friday night to pick up Malia's mother, who was flying in from Massachusetts. While on the road, the stepdad said he heard a popping noise, like a pop tire, and pulled over to check on it. That's when a blue pickup truck pulled up behind the car and two Hispanic males got out. This is according to Vince, the stepdad. One of the men's commented, Malia looks very nice, looks very sweet, according to Vince's account. The other man hit Vince in the head and he lost consciousness, he told police. Um, he said the abductors hit him in the head and then at some point when he woke up, he said he was in the back of the truck with Malia and her brother and three Hispanic males were also in the vehicle. So he's trying to say that when he got out to check the tire, these Mexicans, they put him while he was passed out, dragged him to their truck with the kids, he told the police he was in and out of consciousness until about 6 p.m. Saturday, so that's almost 24 hours later, when he woke up on Highway 6 with his one-year-old son, and Malia was not there. Vince said he walked to a nearby hospital where he received treatment and reported her missing. The stepfather's story has a lot of blanks, says Sergeant Holbrook, but he said he's hoping the public can help them fill in those blanks. I am too. You know, this, no, this sounds like mm, it's, it's crazy. made up to me. It's crazy. It's, it's really crazy. But the police are looking for a blue truck. Um, an Amber Alert describes the car as a blue crew cab Chevy pickup truck, possibly a 2010 model. 
Um, the car Vince was driving was a silver Nissan yes. Altima belonging to Malia's mother is also missing. A traffic camera captured an image of the Altima driving through an intersection in the Houston suburb of Sugarland just before 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. The image captures the Nissan Altima on Saturday during the time Vince said he was in and out of consciousness. So this is his, okay, see this where this where it, the police probably are kind of confused. Like, okay, you said these guys put up in a truck. You was in and out of consciousness. You woke up in their truck. Your kids was in the truck too. Um, your car was gone. So you're trying to say that while you were in the truck, uh, somebody else pulled up and stole your car and the little girl. And then you woke up on the side of the road with your one-year-old son. On the side on of the side highway of road, with a one-year-old. Yeah, that's, no, that, 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 that's too much. That, that's fishy. I'm like, this is weird. And then they said his car was seen on camera 3 p.m. Saturday afternoon. And he said he woke up around 6 p.m. three hours later. That's what I don't get. Okay, so now let me. This, 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 this is not really on making it, no sense. Says, please speak on it. Because, okay, between 9 Friday night and 6 Saturday, this man been in trucks, cars, on the side of the road. Okay. I don't care about nothing else, but this is what the deal to me sound like. This man is lying because, okay, you wake up on the side of the road at, what? Just been on the side of the road, period. I don't care when he wake with up. With a one-year-old. With a one-year-old. This baby ain't crawled off nowhere. I mean, even if the baby crawled off and went and lay over in the, you know, on the side road, road on the side somewhere. of the road into the ditch. Yeah. I mean You let you you mean to tell me you can put one year old. Because the one year old can side. crawl and they can walk a yeah. little bit. Some of them can walk a little so bit. You Unless they was strapped in a they didn't say if the baby was strapped in a car seat or nothing. But still if it was but strapped still, in a car seat on the side of the road, you would think somebody, somebody that's really gonna draw attention. Quicker than if the baby I mean, it could be brush or whatever, all that stuff. So Look, Louis says she wonders if any neighbors saw the poor, saw the girl prior to this day on a day. I wonder. I wonder. Mm -hmm. I, oh, you got to push play. It's on silent, right? Yeah, it's on silent. Yeah, you can see her. Yeah. And then Kalui said, I see this all too often sometimes when men or women get into a relationship with someone who had kids from a prior relationship. They may not be able to handle care. Yeah, that's what Sam was saying. Yep, that's what Sam was saying. Cause there's one where this lady, um, it was one on there on the on the Facebook where they showed them videos where a lady and her boyfriend did that too, did something to her daughter, and uh, the dad was in the, the biological dad was in the process of trying to get the little girl. And they were saying how the little girl was a certain age and she only was a certain amount of weight and and that the mama knew that the I man was beating that. the little girl mm -hmm. and the poor baby just didn't stand a chance in the world. Mm -hmm. Like I, I said, you that. know, sometimes they say God put them, don't put more so we can handle. But, you know, sometimes people, I think us as humans, we take it and we, when it, we take that and we use it when the, the way we can to, to work and our best benefit. Like how they saying, you know, uh, the mom knew, but she was scared to say something. Ain't no way in the world, I don't care what a man doing or what a woman doing or whatever. If you ever able to leave home and your child is getting beat, you getting beat or somebody getting beat. If you ever get broken away from this person, that's like they say God don't put them up more on us than we can handle. God send you signs I'd rather and die everything like off. that. Yeah. I'd rather die trying to get away than to stay in a abusive relationship where me where I'm getting abused or me and my kids are getting abused. I'd rather die trying to survive another day. I refuse to have my children get beat or molested. Or anything like that, just because. And I'm I could learn something about because mm -hmm. this is what I say about nope. any of it is I say nope. things about like you right, Kaluie. If, if 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 you in a relationship and as I said, male or female, could be the abuser. 
you think that um whoever just beating this child they ain't beating a partner right I said they whooping on everybody. I'm sorry. Some even if it's verbal, because mm-hmm. you gotta have no ounce of no love. It's just pure straight hatred. Not just not even not to, just, just not not towards the kid, but just in period in general to, to watch somebody Evil. beat yours like that. Yo yo, you know ain't no way because or you I'm join that mama. in too. A lot True. of them join in. I'm that mama. I'm telling you. You can ask my kids. You can ask anybody who know me. I do not play with my kids. Ain't no man, ain't no woman, ain't nobody gonna beat on my children or abuse them. And I know, like I know, <laughs> no way. And I always been telling my kids, me and my son was talking about this the other day, the youngest one. Like all through their life, I always ask them all the time, like all the time. <laughs> yeah, Has anybody ever touched you? Has anybody ever act like they do? The coaches at school, if they ever look like they want to, I mean, I, and my sons would be laughing at me. Like they still crack up about that today because they don't get it. And I'm like, when you have children, you will get it. You will get it. You don't have kids yet. So it's like, they be like, mom, why are you always asking us? No, no, and no. Or we would tell you, or we would fight them. Or my sons, ain't nobody going to mess with me. Shoot, I whoop they butt. I do this, you know. But they got like, away. Like it. a lot of times, you know, some kids, when they, uh, they I call it rocky, rocky, to like get you in a position and where you uh, easy to let your guard down. Like, I never was the type, and I never had this going. My kids been in sports be and stuff kids. too. Yeah, but they all that stand the night at the coach house and mm-mm, ain't nothing that baby. We mm-hmm. gotta get up, and we gotta get up now and drive over there. Don't you know what Sam? We always gonna go together. Your nephew will tell you that um, one of their coaches, um, and I'm not gonna say his name because um, I'm just not. But he's a great guy. It's not like he did anything. He's a really great guy. But anyway, um, both of my sons went to the same school. They're four years apart. So when one of them started high school, the other one was still in grade school. When the other one finished high school, the other one was finishing junior high. And when the other one graduated from high school, the other one was a freshman in high school. So they're exactly four years and like two months apart, something like that. And so the same, the oldest son, he went to the same school. So he had the same coaches as my youngest son. And my oldest son will tell you, basically they was both going to this high school, a total of eight years combined, right? Um, from the beginning of ninth grade year for my oldest son, this coach, he's a great coach. And he would have like, uh, events at his home. Like they would have like, uh, mat in tournaments, NBA 2K tournaments, um, uh, you know, just doing different things, bowling tournaments, they barbecue, they grill, especially after a game or after, mm-hmm. you know, the season. It wasn't like a every day or every week thing. It was like, you know, after a good game or after a season or, you know, something like that. And I would tell them all the time, if you ever feel comfortable over there, you better call me right away. You better, um, if somebody ever touch you, you better do whatever you have to do to get them off of you. Do whatever you have to do to survive, mm-hmm. to come home. I'd rather for you to come home. Even, I used to tell my sons, if you have to fake it to make it. And, and it's sad that you have to do that, but these are things that you have to teach your children. And too mm-hmm. many children con- continually get abused because the parents are not talking about it. Like we said in our last uh our last um hood show, uh a lot of people back then in the seventies and eighties, a lot of people didn't talk to their children about that. My mama mm-hmm. didn't. She never told me and my two brothers, um, if somebody do this or let me know if somebody do this or you know, we were never told that stuff and we really didn't find out about things like that. Till you know, later when we saw it on TV and TV shows, you know, even shows like Bill Cosby, where they would talk, you know, certain shows like that, we see it on there, we'd be like, what the what? What? <laughs> you know? So I've, I've been telling my, too? yeah, I've been telling my sons this forever. And my son, my youngest one told me the other day, I promise you, we, my, me and my sons talk about everything. And he told me the other day, he's like, mom, because we were talking about that. I was like, he's 18. Boy, ain't nobody ever touched you. And now it's like, it's, now it's like joking because I've been doing it for so many years. So now I'll be like, boy, you would tell me, right? 
Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at him. He's like, Mom, come on now. He said, you know what, Mom? The craziest part of you keep going through this with us was the fact that my older brother used to ask him the same stuff. He was around the same people, around the same coaches, around the same teachers, and nothing happened to him. He never <laughs> said anything happened to him. Mm-hmm. So why would you think something would happen to me? And I'm like, because you never know. You never know. It can be the pastor, the priest, the teacher, the mailman, the babysitter. I mean, your brother, your cousin, your uncle. Your, come on now. We already know, right? We already know, right? It, it can be anybody. It can be anybody. But anybody. You know, sometimes it, I heard this from people, like pastors or two. They always say stuff about, like, your boyfriend or your girlfriend or something like that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you yep. been right. like you Kului, single by ask. yourself, you uh you mm-hmm. you uh you, you do want that, but then it's almost like if you bring this person in your home, I know and exactly you think it's what right, you're saying. And then something happened, and then you be like, and you feel guilty. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people are single. And I've heard people say this before. Like, I'm not getting a relationship to my sons or my daughters is grown. You know what somebody told me? One, ooh, we, this story, this lady had told me this story how um, when they were growing up, her mom, when she had, like, boyfriends um, who spent the night or stayed in the house or whatnot, at night she would lock her daughter's doors. She would lock her, they, she would lock their door. She had locks on the outside of their door, not just on the inside, because like most people got locks on the inside of their uh, bedroom. She would lock, she had lock padlocks, like with the keys, you know, on the outside of each of her kids. And I'm thinking, so if a fire or something broke out, brand, like, so and your child you is two floors in the house up, that bad, you locking your children in the room? No, I, I if, swear, if it's that I heard, serious, I heard it. Let me tell y'all something. And I ain't gonna say no name. But I used to live in these apartments. And this girl moved up there. And uh, I I think I went to school with her and some family. Anyway, we weren't like buds or nothing like that. But we knew of like each other. Like associates or something? And one night she knocked on the door. And my son come and get me. He said, somebody's the door, mom. I go to the door. What you doing? Da, 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 da. And I'm thinking always, because when we said there was bar and everything, they brought sweet out of sugar. She says to me, you seem pretty nice. Can you do me a favor? And I was like, first of all, what? <laughs> Can I leave my purse over here? I was like, what? Ain't no money in that nanny. I'm about and, to say it's some money in it. It <laughs> ain't no money in that nanny, but she has some credit cards and her food stuff card. And um, she was gonna have some company. And I'm just, I'm letting her talk. And I was like, you can't leave your person, y'all. I don't want if we get too drunk basically or drunk, high, or whatever they was gonna be doing. I don't want to wake up and my purse gone. I said, wow. What? No. In in the end, I didn't end up letting the lady do it. But I'm just thinking to myself, okay, so you take your purse, your purse over somebody else. It's because you went to school with me or you've seen me before. (laughs) Because you don't trust this ninja. (laughs) But but you rather leave your purse at my house. I'm going to have up in there if I was that stupid. Right. To have this man come over and do whatever you think you're going to get. Nah, I said, mm-mm, I ain't getting in that. I, I, was, I ain't care. It could have been whoever. I ain't messed with that. You could tell uh, me there wasn't nothing in there. Something come I could look your in there with you yep. and inventory. Yeah, she up there knocking at your door talking about, um, I had $25 in the bottom of my purse. No. That's what I'm saying. Mm-mm. That's what I'm saying. She said, if you had to worry, that's a red flag already. Thank right. you, Kalua. Thank like, you. I, I know she tell me about it all the time, and I laugh, but like, as I'm sitting here thinking about it now, it's been over like a while. Like I think I, my 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 youngest wasn't even in school yet, or if he wasn't barely in school. And I remember 
my, cause yeah, he was cause he was going over his dad. That's what it was. And my oldest boy came, and I said, "You gonna have some money in your house?" And 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 I always talk to my oldest son, you know, cause we done been through basically everything together. But I remember telling my son, I said, and sometimes when we think about, it, we laugh. But I'm like to myself, you gonna have somebody in your house that you can't even trust me. Your credit card, I know she put some credit cards in it. And now that you know, you can video and well, we'll do all that stuff. This. But I'm just thinking to myself, I wouldn't have nobody in my house that I couldn't trust that they, you know, they gonna steal from me or not. Okay, mm-hmm. so your purse. What about? The, I mean, I never would have been a unit or nothing. But I'm just wondering, they have TV, VCR, <laughs> chiller, got toys worth something or anything. I'm like, like uh, flat screen. Did, we did gonna you, take the flat screen. Forget the did, purse. Did, <laughs> did she had to pack up the house and just what? <laughs> anything that any what they call it, cash and carry, anything like that. Like she had all shops, cash and yeah, carry. Yeah, you. What well, she got rid of everything, but she did no lie, y'all. This lady came to my door. The front, I remember because we always went out the back because that's where the mailbox was. At. No lie, this lady asked me because she leave her purse at my house because she didn't want to wake up. And her purse was gone. I'm like, either something happened already before, or she just got a random or something. I don't know, but I just like, I, well, I, the only problem with me, me and my, all three, me, all three of us lived there, but me and my oldest two lived there alone. Y'all wouldn't believe some of the stuff that I was saw from women having men come, where they would have, like, what, what triggered it, this, this, this is when you said how the lady would like the children in the room. Mm-hmm. Kids can come downstairs. Mm-hmm. I didn't have people asking me how long I was gonna be outside. Can they kids play with my help? I mean, excuse me, hey, no. <laughs> like, take them out. I don't know what. I, no. So they can have some male company. <laughs> I said, you can you babysit you, you, for like an hour? That's all can, y'all need. No, no, no. They want to know can I play? Uh, 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 some. Uh, you can know my what? kids play with your kids? Can they sit here with y'all for yeah. a little bit? Where you going? They only need one hour. No need one hour. But you let me tell talk you something. to me about something. Nope. Take it with you. I can't remember if I told you all this story before, but if I did, forgive me. Maybe somebody <laughs> didn't hear it. But when Sam was talking about uh, the purse, <laughs> okay, I remember, and I was, um, this was before I had children, and you know those, remember those apartments? They now turned them into some kind of um, social services thing, I think. On 4-8. 48th of Sprague. Remember, they like six stories high. You can I, see I, them from Main Street. Yeah, okay. As, I, I know what you're talking about. I they used to be apartments. Right. There. They down in the cut. Like, the only reason why you're going to be down in that neighborhood is because you live in that neighborhood. Because it was on a dead-end street. And it was at the, it was deep at the bottom of a hill. Cause you know, all those nice houses over there. Yeah, you couldn't see them. Until they started clearing out all the trees. Right, so they're clearing out all the trees in the apartment. Those apartments. I never knew what them was. I mean, I've seen them, but I never. I I used to stay over there. And I remember, I remember when I stayed there, it was around the time where I didn't have nowhere to stay. And I was just (laughs) staying over different people's house with friends, relatives, I was homeless. <laughs> so when people talk about being homeless, I'll be like, I know all about it. Um, I was young and I was homeless. And this lady who uh, used to go to our church, um, she had co-signed for me, her niece, and like three other people, all from the church, to get an apartment in this building. The building wasn't all that. As a matter of fact, it wasn't all that so much that our rent, my rent, was only $250. Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. Even back then, $250 for apartment, that was cheap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was, that's, mm-hmm. So when I say <laughs> it was the hood, like the hood, it was the hood. And one day, speaking of the purse story that Samantha was telling y'all about, um, when she said this lady didn't trust people in her house with her purse, um, I had actually came home from work one day, jumped in the shower, 
Um, I, you know how you go in the bathroom, you take off your clothes. If you got money, whatever on you in your pockets, you put it, you know, somewhere on the sink, on the back of the toilet, you know, on a stand that holds your bathroom stuff in your bathroom, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's what I did. It was payday. I just got paid and my money was in my pocket. I just came from the bank and I put it somewhere Mm -hmm. on over the sink in the, in the bathroom. And I took my shower and, you know, when you're home by yourself, you don't, like, rush to do things like, let me put my money away. Let me put, my, you know, mm-hmm. because you're home by yourself, especially when you stay by yourself. And so I had left out the bathroom. I had went in my room, changed, put on clothes, deodorant, you know, all that. It was the weekend. I'm ready to, you know, go out, get lit, you know, whatever. And I get a knock at the door. And in come some friends of mine that I used, I mean, I've been knowing them from since, like, junior high school. So they were people that I knew, but they had friends with them that I really didn't know. And anyway, make the long story short, um, they had knocked on the door and I totally forgot, you know, about the money because just not think about it because I'm at my own home and I had totally (laughs) forgot about the money in the bathroom and I was out there and we was kicking it. We was drinking. I mean, we was like kicking it my my homegirls was over you know from down the street and my friends came over and they were guys who i came over that i basically grew up with and matter of fact i knew them before junior high because we used to go to church together when we was in grade school so i've been knowing them for a while and they came over Mm -hmm. and one of the guys asked to use the bathroom i still wasn't thinking about that money in the bathroom Mm -hmm. um went to use the bathroom and immediately after that he said, hey, y'all, you know what? I just got a phone call. I got to go. My, my baby mama, he made us some kind of story. I can't remember if it was baby mama, somebody. I got to go. We got to go right now. And the dudes was like, oh, we got to go? And he was like, yeah, we got to go right now. I'm still not thinking about that money. They leave. Everybody else leave. And mind you, that, that was the only person that went to the bathroom. And then, like, I don't know, like 10 minutes later, I'm just around the house doing whatever, and it just hit me. My money in the bathroom. Somebody went to use the bathroom. This person came out the bathroom ready to go. Man, when I say I booked, I hauled ass to the bathroom, and I saw my money. It was still up there, but when I counted it, it was $100 short. And when I asked the guy about it, no, I would never do that. We'd go way back, like four flats on the Cadillac, you know what? <laughs> And it ain't like, it ain't like this is somebody who you would think would steal, like somebody who you know is broke, down on their luck, you know, somebody who's always bumming off of people, borrowing money. It wasn't like one of those situations. You know, the dude was doing pretty good for himself as far as I thought, you know, just was well, none of us rich. But well, wasn't none of us, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, and that was the thing. I was like, I couldn't prove that he did it, but I knew how much money was there. I knew how much money was there. And it was like, okay, I didn't mess with the guy for a long time, and we weren't dating or nothing. We were just friends who hung out together every now and then and just kicked it, drank, had, mm-hmm. a, you know, some beers, you know, play cards, dominoes, you know, stuff like that. Ever since then, I'm like, you can't trust nobody. You can't trust nobody. I'm like, I've been knowing him for years. And what can I do? I mean, I could call the cops and say, this dude stole $100. Do you got proof, ma'am? I mean, it was like, they make you, you know, sometimes like you, you gotta, you. sometimes you just gotta, you know, charge it to the game. How they say charge it to the game? I had to charge that one to the game. <laughs> but trust me, Lee never came back over again after that. <laughs> but that, I, that story came to mind when Sam was telling me about the lady who didn't trust her purse being in the same house with a guy that she was seeing. But if it was a guy, I mean, oh, and ever since then, yeah, ever, even if I have family over, even if I have friends over, I swear I put my purse up. I put my money up. I put my purse up because I didn't have family still too. So it ain't just like, you know, I didn't have family still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. So, yeah, I put my stuff up, but... Taking it to a neighbor's house? No, nah, I ain't going that far. She said, Marcia, I mean, <laughs> my son came out of my purse. So, me, 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 I was like, I'm listening, though. And I was like, mm. 
Kaluuya said, pack up and move into your house. Last she slide. Next year, she been had that purse. Next year, <laughs> yeah, next thing I know, she wanted, when she came, if I would have been so simple to do it, if she came back to retrieve her purse, she probably would have been like, let me come in. We just went, you know, looking through it. Next thing I know, she want to watch TV. She want to use the phone. It would have been something to look mm-hmm. up. It's 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. She's sleepy. I can't wake up or Knock something. on your door at like 1 a.m. Can mm-hmm. I get my purse back? No, you know, yes, sir. You want that purse staying here till the morning. Oh, I put it out the window. <laughs> you said throw it out the window. Just sit it on the ledge. <laughs> Leave a note. Do not touch unless you are. <laughs> I can tell y'all something, though. One time when I was living in apartments, too, I had cleaned up and everything, and and somebody, a friend of mine lived on top of the hill. So I thought I cleaned up, I went up there, and we was drinking and stuff. And of course, we wanted to get some more. So I had some money at home I went to get, and my friend's cousin, her, my friend's boyfriend's cousin said, oh, I walked down there with you. So I said, okay. So, uh, he walked up to my house, and he did no lie. I said, stay right here. And I forgot that I had an Avon book on my table with my Avon payment in it. Oh. And so, just like you said, when some click into you. It'd be like too late. It's like, yeah. But you know what? It wasn't like, we weren't like drunk, drunk, but we was probably was going to get there. But when it clicked, it took me that because I, I always put my chairs on top of the table when I mop. And I remember I had the Avon book in there, and I had to put the money in it because the lady was coming the next day as she got out of church to get the money. And I had some more stuff that I wanted to get. And when it clicked to me that this money was on this table in this book, I didn't think I could see it. But something told me, and I was able to never got over up that book. Money gone. Mm-mm. See? And I would just like you did. You don't, think about it. you don't think that nobody is just gonna steal from you. Like you just don't think that. But that's why I am the way I am. And that's today. what it was. I was all sitting there drinking and eating and everything. And and if my mind, my memory serves me right, this person had no money. And oh, we was buying everything. So they probably needed. They probably. Yeah. But what it was is went it right was to the store mind, with so. you and was spending your money uh-uh. while y'all both at the store. Because when you said the man left, that's what he did. Oh, he left just he had, like, just like my case, yeah. But what I said oh, I gotta is, go. I'll, I'll be right back. Up there. Yeah. <laughs> and I went up there and I said something. And I said, and I told him, I know you got my money, but you know. She's had temptation sometimes. All it take. Yep. Yep. And yep. I, I, I know I could make him give it to me. But like I said, it was Avon, so I'm sure it wasn't no. Fifty, sixty dollars, and more than like I can't yeah, wear like Avon the sprays was, or nothing like, like that. Six, seven, eight dollars, twelve dollars. They have they have some good stuff though. And I used to I always like order them creams that go mm-hmm. to the uh, you know how they had a, the, 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 you you get the the perfume, the powder. Mm-hmm. I just always used to get the cream and like rub it on my feet. Mm-hmm. And so, if anything, the most could have probably been, and it probably wasn't even twenty dollars if it was. But the point and you of know, the back then, that was it. a lot of money, though. Yeah. $20. And I went right sure. up the hill, just like you said, because you know who was, when nobody, my kids went home, nothing. Yep. I remember I got to cleaning up, and I, we went up there, because you know, we probably, like, nice that we planned it. But this fool said, I'll walk down there with you. And I probably went to the back from my one of says to get the money with her money. Money was there. And, and he, he probably just picked up the book like, oh, let me just, you know, I'm going to sit here and wait. Yep. Let me just flip through this book while I'm waiting and see the money there. See? Mm-mm. I was like, <laughs> this fool, it, I, I'm telling y'all, I you know what no grip people. of money. If it was in it, it was probably $20-something dollars. Because I used to always buy them creams, and I waited until you could buy some money, and you get so many. Mm-hmm. So it, it may not even been that much, but the fact is that people will take anything. People will lie. They don't think they don't think things through mm-hmm. before they start telling the story. Like, you like know you was man. only one there, and you like, oh, like, just like in my case, you was the only one who went to the bathroom. You know, you know what? yeah. I'm still, I still see that person to this day. You know, I still see this person to this day, and I don't say anything because I'm like, you know what? That but was how many years like ago? You know. And if I remember, I know they remember, and it's like, 
I mean, I would think they would probably remember, but you know, you never know. But they but know, like, I remember know everything. Too. I remember my family be tripping when I say, "Remember when we was four? Remember when we was five? Remember when we was, this happened?" They like, "Dang, Tanya, you remember all that?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do." I do, and I remember when we got in a fight and we did this, and was I remember how I got this gap in between my teeth. <laughs> I, One day I'm gonna tell y'all that story, how I got this gap in between my teeth. I wasn't born with a gap. <laughs> my teeth didn't grow in in a gap. I just <laughs> like some people they just have a gap in between their teeth. They just you know that's just how their teeth grew, and their parents just never got braces. Uh, one day I'm going to tell you the story on how I got the gap in my teeth. Who said they was at the dentist on here? That was Roxanne. She probably out. She probably getting work done on her Ro- teeth right Roxanne now. Roxanne was at the dentist. No, she can't be this this late unless she's like emergency in California or, or in yeah. emergency. Because it's like 9.55 here. It's like 7.55 in Cali. So yeah, unless she um unless she's probably done by now. Or had to go to emergency care. But yeah, no so... No feeling how much you want your teeth white. <laughs> I, I, I I'll get one of those Invisaligns you put, like, for the braces know. and stuff. I might get one of those. I'm like, am I too old for braces? Nope. You don't I think want I'm too old? I'll be seeing some people with the... Yeah, I'll be seeing people with the traditional braces, and I, they be I, I would do up there in age, and I'll be I'll like... Be the that they ain't not. It's hard, though. I'm scared to get it's braces. It's a hard trade. Like a, it's harder than a bleach trade. Mm. So I'm going to chew the mess up that thing in my sleep. <laughs> you said it's 4.55 p.m. in Cali? Yep, they what? three out. They no, Hold up, it's 9.55 here. It's only 4.55 in Cali? Where are you at, Kalui? Oh, she's in uh, Hawaii. You're in Hawaii, right? Yeah, see, she got a Hawaiian name, like Kalui. But okay, y'all, so that we got this something to drink. I know, I like, like a Kahlua. Though. Ain't there a drink called Kahlua or something? Kahlua it is a milk. drink called Kahlua and milk or something. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's what it was. I was we know about our about. drinks, nah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not like we drank a lot or anything. We just, hey. When you get when you get up there in the age, you done heard about every drink there is out there. But, um, so we discussed the little girl that's missing. And y'all, people who come in late, <clears throat> if you watch the video over, just put in the comment section comment section after the video what you think about that story or if you think the story don't make sense if you believe the story I just I, and, yeah, and everybody so okay. regardless of what <laughs> we think regardless if we think this is fake you know like it was a setup or like somebody intentionally hurt that girl in the family please keep that baby in your prayers and on your mind she is only four years old look her up Look her up. She's a four-year-old girl, and her name is, <clears throat> excuse me, her name is, let me make sure I say it right, Malia, M-A-L-E-A-H, Davis, Malia Davis, three foot tall. She weighs 30 mm-hmm. to 40 pounds. She was last seen in Houston wearing a light blue Under Armour jacket. Blue jeans, gray Under Armour tennis shoes with pink and white details, and had a pink bow in her hair. Um. So yeah, keep her in your prayers. You know, pray that that little girl comes home safe and sound. Mm-hmm. Now the other story we wanted to talk to you about happened in our hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, last weekend. And let me pull that up real quick. It happened over Cinco de Mayo weekend. Kalui said, I know, poor baby. I just hope she returns home. So, yep, she's in Hawaii. Yep. I hope she do, too. I really do. Mm-hmm. That that kind of stuff breaks my heart. Any kind of abuse, uh, whether physical, uh, mental, verbal, you know, done to a child, especially a small child that cannot defend themselves, that really breaks my heart. Like, it really breaks my heart. And it's even worse when it could happen from the hand of the person who's supposed to protect them. Mm-hmm. Like, as parents, we are supposed to not just raise our children, not just teach them right from wrong and teach them manners and, you know, teach them how to turn into productive citizens get them through high school, you know, that's not our only job. 
we're also supposed to protect our children from people who take advantage of children, from people who abuse children. So that hurts me the most is to when I know that it happened by the mother or the father or the grandparents or like what the heck them is the people who needs to be taken care of um the way they take care of people overseas like you know how you steal something overseas they cut off your hand <laughs> you lie overseas they cut out your tongue you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you rape somebody hmm. Anywho, anywho, I'm going to get off that subject because that is a very touchy subject for a lot of people. But anyway, let me tell y'all about this story that happened here um, where we live in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, Last weekend during Cinco de Mayo, um, a story had started trending on Facebook um, in our local area. It's probably went a little further now because, you know, it hit the news and everything. But... And and there was a specific uh, Facebook post that has said what happened to a particular individual. But now that Facebook post has been deleted, the whole Facebook account has been deleted or either suspended. I don't know if you can suspend your Facebook or if you can delete your Facebook. But anyway, the account who posted the information is, is gone. Is gone, so we can't even go back and see uh, what exactly um, was said on that post. But it was a really long post, and I'm just gonna give you bits and pieces that I remember. But and it was a post from a mother, a mother who had claimed that her daughter at Cinco de Mayo celebration last weekend in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, actually, it was in South Omaha because we have West, East, North, South, like most states, and um. It was in the Hispanic area um, community or in South Omaha. And, I mean, other people live there too, but you know what I mean. It's majorly like Hispanics and Mexicans and stuff like that. But, um, and that's where Cinco de Mayo is every year. Now, the mother had posted on her Facebook account that her daughter um, had got attacked and had got jumped by like 20 people guys and girls and was attacked and she she was able to um run away or escape the attack and i guess run to her vehicle and then um while she was trying to get away you know from the scene or whatever she -hmm. jumped in her car drove off and ended up crashing the car Mm. ended up crashing the car um, and in crashing the car, they said she suffered some, some injuries, which, you know, you could probably expect, especially if she was maybe, you know, fleeing really fast or maybe speeding, just trying to get away from, uh, you know, the people, the suspects or whoever was, you know, the attackers and she was injured. And then, um, they had said something to the effect of, and I, I don't have the post cause it was deleted the whole account, mm-hmm. but it says something to the fact of um, the daughter had medical coverage or the mom had medical coverage or something like that. So they said, we're setting up a GoFundMe to um, help raise money mm-hmm. for not for like hospital bills or anything like that, but it was for repairs or to replace the car that was damaged. And a lot of people were speculating at that time, like, hold up, your Ooh, daughter was attacked, um, she was injured, she drove off, she had an accident, she suffered injuries, but you're, ra- you're doing a GoFundMe to repair the car? And the mother has said something to the effect that the car wasn't her daughter's, the car wasn't even the mother's, the car was somebody else, I don't know if it was a family friend, or something like that, or a relative. But anyway, the car had got damaged because she wrecked. And so they wanted to raise money to fix the car or replace the car. I can't remember verbatim because, again, the person who made the post, they took it down. They shut the whole Facebook um, 
account down. Now, I'm trying to find... Hold on. Let me... Uh, uh, it could, it could not be true that, you know, what the purpose of they're they going to use this money for, but I'm thinking more of... Uh, <coughs> wouldn't you think that they should do more of a GoFundMe for medical reasons, not to repair somebody's car, that if this child sounded like she wasn't even old enough to be driving... Why would she have people's car? Why would she have your car? Right. And so a lot of people were giving. Like, a lot of... I mean, that that GoFundMe, it was getting money, money, money. That People was giving, giving, giving. You know, because they were feeling bad. Because they thinking, this girl got jumped by 20 people who were guys and girls. And she wrecked the car trying to get away. So people was like, you know, feeling sorry. Like, oh my God, the least I can do is give some money, Right. Now, I'm going to read this because our Omaha Police Department made a post on the, their police uh, Facebook channel. And I'm going to read this to you, okay? And y'all, y'all, y'all tell me, you know, what y'all believe. And this is, lo- this is local news from our hood, okay? Mm-hmm. So, the Omaha Police said, this, they posted May 8th at 3.37 p.m. There has been some messaging circulating around social media about an assault near the Omaha Cinco de Mayo event last weekend. I want to make sure you're in the picture. Um, Last weekend, we want to take a few minutes to explain what our detectives found while investigating this case. On Saturday, May 4th, 2019, at 9.15 p.m., Omaha police responded to a property damage accident at 23rd and F Street, which is in South Omaha, it was determined that a 14-year-old female driving a Dodge Caliber was driving north on 23rd Street and ran the stop sign, colliding with a Jeep that was traveling eastbound on F Street. The 14-year-old female complained of head and hand pain and said she had been fleeing from a physical altercation prior to the accident. OFD uh, medics transported the female to Nebraska Medical Center Officers is- issued a juvenile street release citation to the 14-year-old for no driver's license and failure to yield right away. Mm. Officers continued to follow up on the 14-year-old female's claim of being assaulted by a large group. Investigators have determined that the 14-year-old female and other juvenile females made arrangements to meet up and fight. This fight was captured on video and shared on social media. During the conclusion of the fight, the 14-year-old female fled in the vehicle that she eventually crashed at 23rd and F Street. She received minor injuries during the incident. Initial claims that a large crowd followed the vehicle and beat on the vehicle were determined to be false. Officers have interviewed one of the juvenile females involved in the fight with the 14-year-old female. That female has been juvenile street released for third-degree assault. The 14-year-old female will face additional charges of third-degree assault and false information. Officers are still attempting to identify the third female involved in the altercation. And, of course, anyone with information is urged to call Omaha Crime Stoppers at 402-444-STOP or at www.omahacrimestoppers, all one word, dot org. Now, this is what I want to show y'all next. Let me see, let me see, let me see. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Hmm. Here we go. All right. I'm going to play something for y'all real quick. Uh, Here we go. (coughs) Excuse me. I think I'm catching a little cold. But anyway, I'm going to see if I can play this for you real quick. Hopefully it won't mess up. Let me turn the, uh, the added sound down.
Okay, I'm gonna play the video for you again and you have <laughs> Okay, let me pause it and go back. Hold on, y'all. I don't know how well y'all were able to watch that, but if you watch it very closely, you see that there is somebody um, being uh, jumped. Mm. And hold on, I got to put it on the white screen again. Okay, there is somebody uh, being jumped, but it's actually only two girls that's doing the jumping. Mm -hmm. And the girl who was getting jumped, she was on the ground, um, on the concrete, on the ground, looked like she was covering herself. And it was a girl who was punching down on her, and then it was a girl who was uh, kicking her. But that's it. Now, there are claims of other videos being out there from different areas at the Cinco de Mayo event. Um, if anybody's watching who was at the event or know of any other details, please feel free to comment in the chat mm -hmm. and let me know, um, like what point of view you were at the event or anything like that. But basically, yeah, it is awful, Miss uh, Cislo, regardless of how many people jumped the girl, regardless if it was 20, if it was mm -hmm. boys or men, or if it was, um, just two people like this particular video show but uh hey diary of in hey hey lady that's our omaha friend there <laughs> <laughs> yes go huskers yeah, yeah. go huskers but yeah so um mm -hmm. that was a video of what happened now the thing mm -hmm. about it is though that the police you know gave her a citation the little girl for lying and falsifying information claiming that she was being chased and that uh, people were beating on the car that she was driving and led her to crash the car. And then on top of that, the police, I guess, are still looking for proof that she was actually jumped by a multitude of people instead of just the two people that they're saying who <laughs> jumped her. That's Samantha. Yes, this is Sammy D, y'all. Hi. My sister from <laughs> another mister. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so this happened in our city, in Omaha, Nebraska, <laughs> in South Omaha, south of here in Omaha, Nebraska, and it's being seen all I do too. over the I don't internet. Like fights. I don't like fights either. The only reason why I showed <laughs> it was because this was one of the videos, a close up of the fight, and it, you can see that it was two people, you know, fighting with this girl. Instead of the 20 or so men and girls that the, you know, the, the girl claimed, yeah. that she claimed.
so now there's other um, issues here because people locally who have been giving to that GoFundMe, um, they claim like, okay, the girl, did she lie about getting jumped by all these people? And then when we find out the girl is 14 years old and the police saying they made an appointment, they made an appointment. Okay, <laughs> now, now I was talking to Sam. And I'm like, okay, some people know all about this growing up, especially, you know, in the hood or whatever. And somebody don't like you or um, somebody doesn't like somebody. And they arrange. Meet me at the park. Meet me at the playground. Meet me at the bus stop. Meet me <laughs> under the bridge. Meet me, you know, and they, they plan to meet to go fight. Now... If you meet somebody to go fighting, you, you it, it might not be no one on one. That's for sure. It might not be no one. I was telling Sam earlier, like when we used to get into it when we was younger. If I knew <laughs> that somebody was coming to fight me, trust me, I was not gonna be alone. I was not gonna be alone. Me and my uh, <clears throat> cousin was telling a story. We was at her house the other day, and we were telling a story to somebody. Um, about one time she had these girls who didn't like her for some reason. And this was probably about, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> maybe 10 years ago. And we was kicking it over her house. And all of a sudden these girls came driving by. She was like, them, them girls who would sweat me, you know, one day at the grocery store and they was cussing at me. She said, I don't even know them girls. <laughs> and I was like, for real? And I was like, okay, well, you know, we got to keep our eye on because we kicking it outside. Um, next thing we know, you know, the time of the night grew later and we decided to go over my house for whatever reason. She was like, I want to go over your house. We get down to my house and we sitting on my porch. And next thing I know, this car rides by. And matter of fact, I was in the house. She was on the porch. My cousin was on the porch and this car rides by and she comes yelling and screaming in the house. Um, Tanya, them girls is outside. They deep, they deep. I'm like, what is you talking about? They at my house? I don't know them bras. <laughs> so I go outside and I'm looking. And they, they, oh, they kept driving past the house real slow. And then they would drive around the block and come back through real slow. And it reminds me of that movie, Friday, when, <laughs> when Smokey was like, try by <laughs> when Craig is funny. <laughs> And they all took off and ran behind the house. <laughs> but, um, anywho, I was like, okay, oh, okay. obviously these girls coming to do something to you. So, you know, back then I was still in that rah, rah, rah age. I might have been grown, but one thing for sure, you ain't going to roll up at my house. You ain't going to roll up at my house. <laughs> and I'm going to be sitting inside the door ducking behind the window. So, yeah, we got our sneakers on. We went outside and stood on the uh, stood on the sidewalk. The girls drove by one more time, and then they left. They just left. And so, but what we did was we called. All you got to do is make one call, phone call on our family, and everybody was there. We had about 15 cars in front of my house within 20 minutes, guys and girls and ladies and men, because that's how we roll. That's how our family roll, okay? <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> but, you know, nothing ended up happening, and the girls never, we never saw them again. But it's just the point, getting back to this story of this little girl, when you make arrangements to go fight somebody, you don't never know what you might walk up on. Now, thank God this girl wasn't more seriously injured right. or killed. That's what I'm thinking about. Like, if you go on a, like, now Thank you, Diaries. Like, Back me up, sweetheart. She from the old, she from Omaha. <laughs> That's how we do. <laughs> People be sleeping on Omaha. I'm telling you, they just think we some country <laughs> hick town with one black person living here. And cornfields. And we still tipping cows. And there's black people there. They also actually sure. know them. If there are black people here, we still walking through the back door or some stuff. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta get permission to enter. We gotta get permission to enter. May I, may, may I enter? You can go sir? around the back. Sir? Massa, can I please enter? You can come through the <laughs> patio, though. <laughs> but no, um, I think that nowadays people always, I hear this a lot, and it's not just kids saying it. People will say, drop the, lo drop the location. And when I'm about to pull mm -hmm. up, I pull up on you. 
okay, you got to be just an ignorant person to really tell somebody, I'm a so-and-so, such-and-such, such. this is, mm-hmm. yeah, this is my location, pull up. Never tell okay. your house location. Somebody, <laughs> your job, you walk Never tell your street, job. Wherever you at. Okay. Meet me at McDonald's. Even if, <laughs> even if that. Okay, say somebody. I'm just playing, y'all. Say, this was back in the day, me. This ain't today, me. But nowadays, I be hearing it a lot. Like, like sometimes I'm mm-hmm. like, I get caught up reading on that Facebook. That's why I'm disciplining myself for the last couple of weeks. I had to break myself from that reading on it. Read what this, this, this every every post and everything that I say. And the main thing I hear, and this is more female than male. Oh, drop your location because we a pull up. Okay, first of all, why it's got to be we? If you got a problem with this person, don't recruit other people to go with you because that's how people lose their life. But Somebody, they will if you recruit because they, they, like, they got to make sure if they show up somewhere, they, they better have some backup. But, a lot but of you still don't you, never know. Somebody put, can blow your brains out. You. What's your address? What's your location? That be huh? the last location in your cell phone. <laughs> That be the last location that Google shows in your cell phone. I'm like, pull up. <laughs> like, the funniest thing, it was not this, well, yeah, it was the 4th of July that just passed. <laughs> and my sister is like, she's my second to the older sister. And uh, we, we, we met my cousin at the lake. And uh, my uh, cousin's daughter told my sister, she said, where y'all at? My sister was like, oh, we ain't there yet, but uh, we almost. So my cousin's daughter said, well, what's y'all location so we can pull up? So my sister called me, and she said, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, too. And she said, girl, so-and-so just said, what's our location so they can pull up? What the H is pull up? Because it could mean two separate things. We pulling up on y'all because I say but that to you people. Know my sister, we about to you pull up. Like, <laughs> what? The? what? What's a pull up? She was like, "Yeah," because she told me some. Where y'all at? <laughs> uh, get uh, ask the location. And my sister just like, I said, she want to know where we are sitting. Come over here with her. Why did hey, she could just say the girl? My, y'all, my sister must have went off. She was like. Okay, what? Not off in a bad way. She don't but know a lot of the she slang like, she term, like, uh-uh, the that's street why terminology. Yeah. <laughs> she told me she was like, "That's why I don't even talk to him." Because sometimes if I, 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 I and, and my sister got lost <laughs> to me. But one thing is that day was it was a Fourth of July. You know, you was like, "Was it?" I remember we was at Family Dollar, and my sister called me and she said, "Tell us where y'all at." <laughs> What's the location so we can pull up? <laughs> She's like, what's the pull up? What's I ain't laugh so hard. I laugh so hard. So when we get to, get down to the lake, she was like, yeah, tell them so. So they can pull up. <laughs> I laugh so hard. It's still funny to me. I don't care Lord, what. Because, because, I don't care I mean, what nobody said. If you, just, you, you know you just, if you know her. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. like, puzzle. <laughs> It's one of those you had to be there things. She was puzzled like the girl said, uh-uh. pull up and drop your heart off. <laughs> it's like, I, because I don't when mean most people that say pull life. up, they mean, um, like, I know back in the day, a lot of people say we about to pull up and pop the trunk. That's what a lot of people say back in the day, we're going to pull up and pop the trunk. But, like, still people oh, use that term. Cause I'm ready. Like, because be I'm ready. ready. Yeah. Like, like, I say what? that a lot. I t- matter of fact, my uh, <laughs> other cousin, last weekend I was at her house. We was chilling on her patio all evening. And I had called her, and I said, what y'all doing? She's like, oh, we just kicking it on the patio, finished grill. I said, all right, I'm about to pull up. So, you know, some people... I, Some people say I that. Like, I probably would have thought we, they was that a or, or Yeah. Because some people are like, I'm about to come over. I'm about to see. It's just you a little that, that hood terminology. That hood terminology. <laughs> but my sister was like, if y'all wanted to laugh that day, oh my God. Let's just kick the 4th of July off. 
She was like, Thank I ain't you, got time Angela. for all that. Just say that. In Nebraska, I tell them we are everywhere. <laughs> you know, slavery is over. <laughs> then they will ask me about the Huskers and the black players like they were shipped in. <laughs> <laughs> Diaries, you ain't never lied. I swear. The thing I hate the most is when you're talking on the phone uh, for your job, mm-hmm. and maybe if it's customer service or something, and they can tell. I'm so, I, I tell y'all all the time. I try not to be uh, stereotypical, but some things are just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can talk to somebody on the phone, and you can tell they are a black. They black. You can just tell by they by the way they talk. And so he could tell I was black. <laughs> and he was like, "Where are you located?" I said, "Omaha." What? <laughs> black people. Now this happened, and I had posted this on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it, but I posted it on Facebook like a month ago. I said, "I cannot believe in 2019 <laughs> somebody asked me over the phone, and this was my job. I was talking to somebody on the phone." And they asked me, is there really black people in Omaha, Nebraska? I mean, back when I worked telemarketing, when I, I, was, like I was like a teenager. When I've been in Atlanta. I get it. When I was a teenager. That was, you know, a long time ago. But now, in 2019, are there black people in Omaha, Nebraska? <laughs> like, the only thing they think of is corn and fields That's and, it. and our football team. They know black people on the football team. They know that much. But I guess that's the only place they're supposed to be in Nebraska is on the football team. <laughs> I Everybody have else in the state is white. Creighton, though. I have had people asking about Creighton. And I tell people you go out Creighton, get basically almost any kind of degree you want, but you got to come to Nebraska to cornfields. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell them sometimes I, every mile before we see one. Mm-mm. Yeah, if you're like, traveling, because most people who most people who travel through they Nebraska, on the interstate, you on the interstate, see. so you on the outskirts, you are miles and miles from the city. Because around Omaha, Omaha is the largest city in Nebraska, and we right on the border of Iowa. So if you come in from like the west through Nebraska, That's you might you not get. even ever run into Omaha because it's a whole bunch of small towns all through the rest of the state, and they're surrounded by thousands okay. and thousands of miles. Well, not thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of miles of cornfields, cows, chickens, horses, you know, things like that. But uh, oxes, you know, things like that. So, <laughs> yeah, most people who come through Nebraska, if they like traveling on a trip, or going to visit family, they might not ever see Omaha, depending on which way you come through the state. So that's why people think there's black people, because I'm sure all y'all see in them outskirts, there's white people on the farms. Because once I was in Atlanta, <laughs> I had on a Nebraska Cornhusker shirt, and this man asked me, he was like, well, something, he asked me about the Huskers, and I was like, oh, I just live there. He was like, you live where? And I was like, in Nebraska. <laughs> Cause I have Nebraska, it, it said something about the corn. I forgot what the shirt said, but it was like Nebraska Husker. They had a corn Husker, a corn, actually corn collar. Like a husk corn husk or something? Yeah. I was just like, the, knowing me, I was like, man, I was just, I remember it too. And I was right there because it was in that little thing where you buy all that expensive stuff. Yeah. After you go through TSA. Mm hmm. We was up in that little one of shop, and he was like, asked me a question, but I'm just taking to this, taking to myself, like, <laughs> No, it probably was on sale, but it was mine. <laughs> but nothing, or probably, probably got it like from Walmart. Nah, 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 nah. So, yeah, they, and the people from down south, they call it Nebraska. You from Nebraska? New Nebraska. Like you, or I'm New like, Nebraska, or I don't know. Oh, oh, but uh, diaries. Like um, <laughs> people, like I said, people be sleeping on Nebraska. How many times have you heard Nebraska be called Nebraska? Remember when they first came out with that? When all the <laughs> gangs, when all the gangs had started populating up here, in the late eighties, the early nineties, the early two thousands, mm-hmm. they called it Nablastia. <laughs> N e b l a y s t y a Nablastia. They even made a rap song, mm-hmm. a rap song about Omaha, called it Nebra- Omaha Nablastia. I was like. Not bragging about our crime or anything like that, but it's just that people, a lot of people think 
If we're um, just a small place in Nebraska, nobody really has a life here. We <laughs> all they want to do is game bang and yeah. shut corn. But yeah, it, it it gets real up here, just like any other seat. The only thing that's different from us between Chicago, L.A., Miami is just we are a smaller city. But the thing is, when you have a smaller city with a whole bunch of crime, the percentage can equal like like Chicago. I remember one year, the crime was here so bad. People, so many people were murdered within like the first, like, I don't know, three, four months of the year. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we had like 60 unsolved murders before even the half of the year. Now in a smaller city, we a big city, but we on a small scale compared to like, you know, St. Louis, uh, Chicago. But the percentage wise was almost equal to the crime rate for murders in Chicago. So that just lets you know, Chicago might be a huge city with a lot of crimes, but just the ratio, I hope I'm saying this right. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. The ratio from the population to the crime rate, the murders had equal the same percentage ratio in Chicago of people who live there in the murders. So it's all about the ratio and the percentage compared to how many people live there and how many people get murdered. It don't matter how many people, how big your city is. They go by the ratio when they do like the crime statistics and stuff. So yeah, we was up there for many years. We was up there and I'm so glad we not up there anymore because it was, it used to be a very bad time here in Omaha where people didn't want to go out, didn't want to go to the clubs, didn't want to go nowhere, didn't want their kids outside or kept them close to the house. It was, it was bad. <clears throat> She said, Diary said, yep, I remember. Ladies, got to recharge. Subscribe to the channel. Good to see you, ladies. Stay blessed. Thank you, Diaries. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. Congratulations on your you. new ba- grandbaby. Yes, congratulations on your new grandbaby. <clears throat> but, yeah, so that just gives you a little, a little background, a little history of, you know, our hood, you know, where we from or whatnot. But, uh, as far as, um, also that, uh, story with a girl who was jumped, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the police post that they had posted saying that she had got, you know, charged, um, a few of those people who were fighting got charged and they still looking for the third one. But under the post, one, one lady, um, I guess she was kind of upset because she didn't like what was said in the police uh, post. And what did she say? Let me read it right here. I don't want to say her name. I do not want to say her name. But um, let me go to new comments. Go view more comments. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna say this lady's name. Now if she was to call in, I would say, you know, call in and state your name, but I'm not gonna I'm trying to find her first post her first comment because she commented a lot on here on this uh page. Okay, here we go. And then the police even, well, I don't know. I wouldn't even say it's the police replied. I'm going to just say whoever runs this page, I don't know if it's somebody who works at the police station or like their publicist or, you know, something like that. But here we go. Now, this lady, she said that they the police never gave okay she's like best friends this lady who spoke up on the police post she said um they never gave my friend's daughter a citation the one who got jumped so that is false information i think her mother and her would have known if she had received a citation and then underneath that somebody else said it says that she will face additional charges so they will probably just add it on at her first court appearance. Then somebody else said, it says that they, that she will face charges. 
didn't say she was cited. Not saying that this is correct or not, just saying what it says. And then the Omaha Police Department made a comment, and it said, if you have any questions regarding charges, talking to the lady who was, you know, making comments, if you have any questions regarding charges, we will be happy to clarify them. Her mother, referring to the 14-year-old girl, her mother can contact the detective working the case, or you can call, you can direct message them here, and we can help put you in contact with the appropriate person. And um, I had made a comment. I said, uh, we're going to be on the hood table tonight discussing this topic <laughs> if you want to call in. <laughs> I sure did, and I put the link. <laughs> but, um, but uh, and then she said she has screenshots proving um, that she did not agree nor want to fight. Maybe if I could post pics on this thread. And then uh, somebody else said, but she showed up yep, where the fight was said to, to happen. Right. That makes no sense. And then the lady who originally started commenting, you know, the, 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 the friend of the daughter, uh, mother, she said she got set up by a so-called friend. Mm. And then somebody said, this is what happens when we believe everything our teenagers tell us. Yeah. Yup. Yep. She could have or she couldn't have, but I think right. that by her showing up, if she felt, even if it did happen, once she had an accident, she probably should have told the police, you know, yeah, at one point, we, you know, yeah. tell this call the whole truth. Now you ain't got to go through a whole bunch of hoops and yeah. get it out there and until, instead of waiting. Right, and until she's, like, actually, you know, standing in front of the court and, you know, we don't know all the specifics right now. These are just, you know, what we're reading, what we're hearing. Um, the lady who is a friend of the child, who is a friend of the parent of the child. Where's the who parent is friends with the child's the mother. Instead of the friend. Um, That's what we need to be talking. <laughs> right. um, the friend of the family said, Omaha Police Department, why can't I post a video? But somebody had posted a video. That's where I got that video from, was on the Omaha Police Department new uh, page. And it said, uh, why can't I post a video? I have been friends with this girl's mother over 25 years. Okay. OPD has video proof she was jumped. I have one of the videos. I will try and link it somehow. I can't upload pics or vids in this thread. I'm going to post on my page and share the link. So here's her link. Then somebody said, just what you said. Where are the parents in this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Hold on. Let me go to this lady's page. And then, oh, hold up. Let me see, let me read y'all one last comment from the Omaha Police Department. They said, uh, oh, shoot. I went away. Let's see down here. Hold on. I done backed out and then have to go all the way back in. Okay, here we go. I just want to read the comment that the Omaha Police Department has said after that. <clears throat> This is crazy. This is like real crazy. Like, <laughs> it, it's so many stories mm -hmm. out there from this incident. Okay, the Omaha Police Department said, our detectives are aware that there was a physical altercation and that video was captured. Two of the individuals involved in the altercation have been cited. We continue to follow up this case and encourage anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers at 402-444-STOP. And then they put, thank you. Now, again, I'm not going to say the lady's name who was making all these comments on the police uh, post. If she happens to be watching, she can always, you know, always uh, call in or post in the comments that she wants to call in. But on her page, she did have, you know, made a statement on her page saying that she was, you know, friends of the lady who was whose daughter was jumped and she's claiming that she was set up, mm -hmm. but there are people who are saying that she, uh, agreed to meet to fight. But the bigger thing is here is a lot of people is like, okay, so now the story isn't making sense. The police well, is saying this, <clears throat> people are saying this and that, and they want, people want to know the real story because there was a GoFundMe out there and people are, um, 
you know, was putting money into the GoFundMe. We can't find none of that now. And the mother of the child who was in the fight, her channel is gone. It's like it was deleted. The post was deleted, everything, um, you know, trying to raise money. And so some people is like, okay, was this post just to get money to fix this car? Because we know from the police report that the girl didn't have a license. She was 14 years old, out there driving. Uh, she wasn't with an adult. Uh, that's even too young to get a driver's permit, ain't it? Because you got to be like 15, 15 to get a driver's got, permit. I think they make it with so many miles. Yeah. I mean, so many, so many log miles. Right, or and then there was no insurance. A driver person. I the mean, a person with that got a license. Yeah. And the police said there was no insurance on the car. So a lot of people is thinking like, okay, is this some kind of scam? Not saying the girl didn't get in a fight because we saw the video. But as far as raising the money, like, is this some kind of scam to pay for this car? Um, the child was driving the car. She shouldn't have been driving. Um, the person who's the rightful owner of the car doesn't have any, any insurance or either the insurance is not covering it because somebody was driving a car who shouldn't be and who and was under too young, age, underage, no, no license, license, no you permit, know, nothing. No, without permission to ride that car, to drive that car. So is it like the person, the rightful owner is trying to get money to get that car fixed? Like I was talking to Sam earlier. I'm like, that's like me. Um, allowing your child to uh drive my car knowing they don't have no insurance um the car doesn't have any insurance that child doesn't have a license but you let that child drive that car and then they wreck it so what am i supposed to do mm -hmm. like personally if you let a child drive your car, unless it was stolen. Now, if it was stolen, that's something different. Mm -hmm. If the car was stolen, but if you willingly let a child underage drive the car with no insurance, no license, and then you set up a GoFundMe? Like, GoFundMes are not for situations <laughs> like that. GoFundMes are for, and see, that's what me and Samantha said. We're going to do a, a video on GoFundMes. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. She suggested that tonight. We're going to do a video I, I, on GoFundMe. To. Because too many people, and I'm not saying this is the case. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just doing commentary on everything that we have seen and heard. <clears throat> so I'm just giving my opinion. <laughs> um, those are, GoFundMe's are for serious issues. If people get laid off, if people get injured, if people are killed, if people... Um, you need a medical they house burn uh, up something. medical assistance um they they have cancer they have a you know goFundmes are usually for something that is unpreventable that's what goFundmes are usually for things that are unpreventable you let a young child drive your car and wreck it and you set up a goFundme I mean first of all, there's a lot of errors in, in, in the way somebody was thinking because ain't no child going to be driving my car that's 14 or 15 um, with no license. And I don't have insurance. You don't have insurance on the car? I'm scared to do it. I'm scared to drive myself if I didn't have insurance that's on my I'm car. Take and I keep insurance. <laughs> I got full cover. We got insurance on every car in the house. Yeah. Regardless if we want to pay it or not, we got insurance on every car in the house because it's not always you. Like I teach both of my sons, defensive mm -hmm. driving, it's not always you. You have to look out for other people mm -hmm. who are not paying attention. Um, so that's what a lot of people are. I mean, they they made a lot of comments on that post about the GoFundMe and mm -hmm. the person who let the child drive their car. So, mm -hmm. but you know, when you put stuff out there like that. You go. You gotta gotta just know that you might get some people who are skeptical, <laughs> are skeptical about that. And yeah, I don't want to talk to too much now. about it because we've been told that. But I want to say though, that GoFundMe will be the next one we talk about. Yep, yep, it'll be the next the one. Good talk about. ones and the good and the bad of it. Right. And how sometimes when stuff start off being good, people get a hold of it and they see the good of it and it's. Always some, you know, not always, but a lot of times wicked stuff come about and people's minds start to wonder, like, okay, if you can get people to get this and this and this for that, then I'm going to try this. But they anticipate and people the same take as the other. There it is. So yeah. we'll talk about that. be what we're doing next But time. the thing that kills most people, including me, 
is you make this post on your Facebook. My daughter was this. She was jumped. And then mm-hmm. 20 people, whatever. And then she crashed the car. And we setting up a GoFundMe. We need this car mm-hmm. fixed or replaced. And then when people start questioning and inquiring and the police statement come out saying some of this stuff was lies and that the girl got in a fight and she had made an appointment, an appointment, an arrangement to go fight <laughs> To go and fight, and now y'all want something. money to replace a car or fix a car nope. that the child should have never been driving in the first place. That whole post is gone. The Facebook page is gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that you makes people what? think now, like, no. okay, so was this just some scam? Y'all can't do that. So y'all let me know really what y'all need think. It. Y'all let me know what I think. I'm just doing commentary, <laughs> whether it's from Omaha or whether it's from China. When I do commentary on a particular subject, I just state what's heard, um, what's said, and what's in the blogs or on the news, and y'all give me y'all feedback and let me know how y'all feel about the situation. Mm-hmm. But anywho, we about to wrap this up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for everybody tuning in. Thanks Bye, for everybody, y'all. you know, chopping it up with us in the chat. Sam, I'm about to get her in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> she she was at work today and she gotta work tomorrow. See, I'm off this weekend. I got some uh some uh Mother's Day cake orders that I do have to do. Um, but other than that, I'm off this weekend. Uh still don't know what I'm doing for Mother's Day. You said you don't know really what you're doing either. I say we both go out and just eat, make the kids pay for it. You know I wanna go to the Shoot. Sure. Like, for real. I, I told my son, well, my son already knows what I always want for Mother's Day, and that's, like, he goes to uh <clears throat> to um, Bath and Body, and he gets me a whole bunch of stuff. He just gives me a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> or a gift certificate. He gives me a gift certificate to Bath and Body because he knows I love my lotions, my sprays, you know, my candles, all that. So he, he loves doing that. I'll be, I, the candle, I'll be my whole dresser just full of bath and body sprays, everything. <laughs> um, so he, I was like, hey, what you going to get me for Mother's Day? What you always want? And I'm like, you sure you know what I want? Yeah, we know what you want. I'm like, <laughs> so, but yeah, other than that, son. I mean, I wouldn't mind. The graduate boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, my son, that's her nephew. He graduates next Thursday. We're going to be there deep. We're going to be there deep. Um, oh, so I'm so happy. To get up in there. We went he ain't going to wanna uh, hang on me at no more graduation. I'm be like, y'all about to check him. Check. I'm be the one on the side with the computer check. We that family to school be like, Go back. please nobody applause Go to back. the very end. Go back. And everybody up there, yeah. You know, <laughs> like you at a football Ooh, game. We win, I was like, people be loud. I be like, dang. And then when we get up they there, must I'm have like, we ain't as loud as them. Huh? I be like, we don't be as loud as some people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. One time we went, I don't know. It was no, I must have been somebody kid graduation or something. These people, I was like. They screaming like they on their fifth, yeah, like they fifth degree. Tie that, tie that section down or something. They screaming like they on their fifth degree. But you know what? It yeah, is is a blessing. Um, me and my son, we went to the school today to purchase a whole bunch of tickets, um, so that we can give them I out to people. Pulled up on them. And, sh- <laughs> <laughs> and one of the men who work in the school, he was talking to my son. He was like, "Man, y'all out of here. How does it feel?" He's Pull like, it feels good. And then when he found out he had a full ride scholarship, the Buffett scholarship, he was like, oh my God. Like, this scholarship is huge, y'all. The Susan, I think it's Susan, Susan. Thompson um, Buffett Susan. Foundation, you know, Warren Buffett's the rich, one of the richest Susan men in the Buffett, world. That's his, daughter. his sister. Uh, his sister. His sister. Okay. Uh, and she has a college foundation, and every year they give out a certain amount of people uh, from Nebraska. A uh, full ride scholarship to any Jackie school is. in Nebraska that they want to go to, and he was like, "Oh my God!" He was like, "Oh my God, Mom! I don't know which one of y'all should be more excited, but I know you excited." I'm like, "Heck yeah!" And the man was like, "You might not even get it right now, but when you finish college, and you look back, and you don't owe nobody one red cent." Me, man, like me too. I and got college loans. He owe me back. 
I got college loans, so I, I still, oh, I'm still paying on college loans every month, every month. But to look back and say, I got this degree, now I got this great job, and I don't owe nobody, that's that's a real accomplishment. That's a big deal. So, yeah, I, I'm proud mama. Proud mama bear. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm still going to check and make sure everything add up. <laughs> Some somewhere I'm drawing a blank. No, that's funny because when we went to the school today, and I was going in there to uh, when I first when we first walked up to the building, I said, "You sure you don't owe any fines or anything?" Because heck, when I graduated and when my oldest son graduated, that dude owed like a hundred and fifty dollars worth of fines. It was lost books, lost library I books, lost. Book I in mean, my, car for Marcel, my oldest son. I remember that he owed so much money. They 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 wrote some of it off, not like wrote it off, but they took some of it off because I'm like, I swear we turned stuff in. Like I swear we turned stuff in, but you know because we couldn't prove all of it. They knocked some of the charges off, but it still was like a hundred dollars that I had to pay to get him. Nut. I said, "Do I really want this boy to graduate? I want my hundred dollars." Sure, I'm like, Mm-mm. so when Cat when he walked up there today, I was like, "Okay, you sure you don't owe any fines?" And then we went I wish to. I would have been there. I said, "Check, check, check." We, girl, he, he used to uh, sneak books home in kindergarten. <laughs> Check him. He Check did him. not. I'm mean, be like, go no, all the way back. When I went to the um, treasurer's office to, to buy the tickets, I said, um, now he's really graduating, right? And, and he's really getting a scholarship, right? They was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm so, it's, it's still like, I don't know. Some people like, uh, yeah, they got a scholarship. You know, some people don't really like, I don't know. Probably wouldn't understand how big of a feeling or how great mm. that is for, for you to have a full ride scholarship. But I'm like, mm, I'm bathing in all this excitement. <laughs> but anyway, y'all. Anyway, anyway we're not going to get on sure they check them. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that diploma in the envelope now. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they, they, um, they, they will just give you the, the little uh, the, the um, envelope or the Oh, oh they did that to me when I was when I graduated from high oh school. God, when I graduated that. from high school, and I think I told this story before, but when I graduated from high school, I owed some fines. Oh, oh. And um, oh, yeah. at that time, I wasn't living at home. I was still going to school every day. Graduated at the top of my class. Um, but when I walked across that stage, they gave me a blank envelope. <clears throat> nobody else knew. I knew, but nobody else knew. And then after I paid the fines, I think I paid the fines like a month later because I was working somewhere like McDonald's or somewhere like that. I paid that fine and I went back and they gave me my diploma because I'm like, I'm getting that. And the fine, I think it was like 60 or 75 dollars, something like that. But, you know, back then we wasn't making a lot of money back then. I was working part time at McDonald's. And I was just out there, just out there taking care of myself any way I could. So I graduated. I walked across that stage and everything and went back and paid my fine and got my diploma. Like, yep, it's mine. I earned it. I deserve it. <laughs> but, yep. So anyway, you guys, um, again, thanks for tuning in. Is there any last minute things you want to say about anything we talked about? No. Okay. <laughs> well, and we'll be back um tomorrow on my main channel, Tanya's the Tanya's uh Primetime TV Media Reviews. I'll be back over there tomorrow with you guys um probably tomorrow evening or during the day. I'm off tomorrow. I'll be working on cake orders. So I might go live while I'm working on some cakes. So you never know, you never know. But anyway, you guys, in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad and the hood table, stay blessed, stay safe, and we out. Deuces. Deuces up, y'all. Deuces up. <laughs>